60 years ago, Sputnik was launched, the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth. And this made people worry. People in the West were worried about the superior technology that the USSR had. They were worried about nuclear war. They were worried about their futures. But no one was worried about the junk left in space due to the space race. After all, space is big. Why worry? Since Sputnik, over 8,000 satellites have been launched. That's the equivalent of about one every three days. And although most of these have helped us down here on Earth, the majority are now defunct. Some have come down, burnt up in the Earth's atmosphere, or actually come crashing down into the oceans. But most are still up in space, orbiting the Earth uselessly. In 2003, I'd been out of engineering for a few years. I wanted to get back in, so I did some volunteer work at a company that was making a spacecraft. They were competing in the $10 million X Prize. It was won in 2004 by Bert Rutan's Spaceship One. This is now the basis of Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic. And when I was working with this company, I learned an awful lot about a really small area of space, spacecraft. And I didn't know how they all fitted together. I asked, well, how does it all work? Where are the books? And I was given boof, tomes about this area. Boof, load more books about this area. Boof, another load, all full of maths and formulae. I didn't really want to go through all the maths and formulae, so I said, where's the book in plain English? There wasn't one. And as was mentioned earlier, I decided to write it. I thought it would take six months. Four years later, my book was published. It's only rocket science, an introduction in plain English, now available from all good bookshops. Thank you. <laughs> when I was researching the book, I discovered that all the rubbish that we'd left up in space, that was going to become a problem. Fast forward to 2011. I'm now at Singularity University in Silicon Valley, based at one of the NASA campuses. I've been given the opportunity to work on any project I want, as long as it has the potential to positively affect the lives of a billion people. That's 10 to the 26 people. That's one in every seven people alive. So I thought about it, and I decided I wanted to work on space debris. My first problem was to convince an astronaut that space debris was a problem. He had been out on four spacewalks, just protected by his spacesuit. He was out in the vacuum of space. And he said, space is big. Why worry about space debris? My verbal reasoning skills were not so hot. It's not something you often get trained as, as an engineer. But I knew that he was a scientist, and I could convince him with science facts. So I went back to my computer, and I googled, and I sent him a very, very, very long email. It was full of peer-reviewed papers and publications and links, more information. The next morning, he said, space debris is a problem, and I am worried about it. <laughs> I love how scientists can turn through completely 180 degrees, turn their views if they're given enough facts. That was 2011. 
Yesterday, in my taxi coming here, I was speaking with a taxi driver and said I was giving a talk on space debris. And he said, oh yes, that's a problem, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, it's probably not due to me. Films like Gravity with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney have helped raise the public consciousness of space debris. Gravity was a Hollywood blockbuster. You have to take some of the things with a pinch of salt. For example, Sandra Bullock got out of her spacesuit. She wasn't wearing very much. According to Chris Hadfield, who we saw in the video, what you wear under your spacesuit is really unsexy long johns. But gravity got some facts right. Space debris is a problem. There are 21,000 pieces of junk bigger than a melon in space. That's one for every day since Sputnik has launched. It hasn't been linear, though. There have been various crashes and explosions that have made them all peak and inc increase, aren't there? So 21,000 bigger than a melon. But there's 500,000 between the size of a cherry and the size of, size of a melon. Melon, that's it, size of a melon. 500,000. That's 22 every day since the launch of Sputnik. There are millions smaller than a cherry. And all this comes from the discarded stuff in space. Lens caps, rocket bodies, even an astronaut's glove is up there. But why would we worry about something the size of a cherry? To stay in space, something has to be going at orbital velocity. That's 17,000 miles an hour. At 17,000 miles an hour, something the size of a cherry hitting your spacecraft has the equivalent effect of a hand grenade going off. It's something we need to worry about. In 1978, Donald Kessler described a scenario. One piece of debris hits another piece of debris, and that explodes into a thousand pieces. Each of those thousand pieces then goes and hits more debris, and they explode into a thousand pieces. Each one of those thousand pieces goes and hits. You get the idea. It's now called the Kessler effect. It's a self-perpetuating cascade that could completely wipe out our access to space. Imagine if our most useful satellites were no longer available. Imagine if we had no more GPS. Couples around the world would start arguing about map reading again. But GPS is so much more than just the maps. In order to work, they need a very accurate clock. So accurate that they only lose one second every 13,000 years. A very accurate clock is very useful in many other areas. Train signaling, power distribution, the mobile phone base stations, if we lost our GPS satellites, we could be without power, water, telecommunications within half a day. Within a week, we'd be without food on the shelves. We'd be without transportation. We'd be without satellite TV. There would be chaos. Over the last year or so, I've been fortunate to work with a company in the UK called Reaction Engines. They're designing a space plane, a plane that will go from the ground up into space and down again. By looking at the orbits, if the space plane goes around the equator, if it comes up and over the poles, if it's at 200 kilometers altitude, or if it's at 600 kilometers altitude, whether the space plane goes nose first, 
tail first or up on its end? I've been able to calculate the probability of it being hit by space debris and work out the safest missions for it. I've also been able to tell the company where they need extra shielding on their spacecraft. This is not a job that my careers advisor was able to tell me all those years ago. But it's one that I can do scientists and engineers are around the world fixing problems. You imagine how far we've come, or think about how far we've come in the last 60 years. 60 years ago, the first satellite, now every day we use satellites in our lives. So we've got space debris littering space, but now people are aware of it. We have the ability, using science and technology, to solve many of the world's problems. We've got the great power to do that. But with that power, as Voltaire says, comes great responsibility. So fortunately now we have groups around the world working on how to get rid of the space debris. There's things like fishing nets, lasers to shoot them down, giant scoops or harpoons and lassoes. But this is just a small proportion of the world's population of scientists and engineers working on a, a small area, a small problem, a small area of the problems that we've got. I've been fortunate in my career. I have a portfolio career, and I can work on interesting problems like space debris. But I've also got the opportunity to work on really fun problems like robot dinosaurs. I go around the world. Wherever I go, China, Nepal, even Mallorca, it doesn't matter what our common language is or what we speak. Our common language is the technology. And when we're talking technology, we understand each other. There are very many people around the world, scientists and engineers, who've worked on very many problems that we have. But there are still an awful lot of problems left. So, which one are you going to work on? Thank you.